you know, uh, this debate today, I mean, it's getting more and more pathetically insular, uh, Keir, for that matter, Rishi, uh, the SNP, as if, you know, they're debating Gaza. Then, that, you know, Starmer has changed his position on the ceasefire five times since October. Uh, well, you're going to say five times since this morning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Cur currently it's some sort of humanitarian ceasefire. Tories still using the word humanitarian pause and so on and so forth. And all of them labouring under the delusion that Benjamin Netanyahu gives a rat's backside what any of them think. I mean, it's all so completely irrelevant, yes, isn't it? Yeah, Lud exactly. Ludicrous posturing of people whose status is entirely negligible as far as this horrendous conflict is concerned. Literally none of the decision makers involved in this conflict are keeping a weather eye on the debate that's going <laughs> yeah. on in the UK yeah. Parliament in order to calibrate their strategy a little bit differently. Um, what this is about, really, uh, politically in the UK, is, bottom line, how does Labour... How does the Labour leadership handle it? Because the party is split over it. It has been an absolute blinking nightmare for the Labour Party, this thing. And that nightmare is actually only just beginning. Uh, in the run-up to the election, we are going to see some extraordinary splintering off of the Labour Party, I think. We're going to get a number of candidates who would previously have stood under a Labour ticket who are going to stand as a sort of independent pro-Palestinian candidates. And, and that is unbelievable, really. This is the arrival of sectarian politics yeah. Yeah. in yeah. our country. You know, I, I'm glad you said that because I was trying to make this point to someone just the other day and the potentially very dangerous precedents that could actually be set in Rochdale where you've got a man on a ballot paper who normally says he's the Labour candidate mm. in a constituency that would go out and put a cross next to a donkey if they had the right coloured rosette on. So could well win that because it says Labour next to his name. He isn't. He may well then push policies of a more sectarian nature. And what this says to me is anybody, because you've got this Muslim vote organisation, anybody wanting to now game the system to that end almost has a, a green flag to try that. And also, also, you know, uh, it's really worrying that you're going to have loads of constituencies, not just Rochdale, where the defining issue of what mm. people vote on yeah. will be a, a, a war in the Middle East. Yeah, which side are you on? That's got to be wrong. This is extraordinary. When our own country, each and every hour of every day, faces the most phenomenal challenges, you know, not a single person in the UK can really think this country is functioning well at the moment. Mm. Or in almost every aspect of public services and all the things that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, things are not working. Yeah. And yet, somehow or other, voters are being presented with choices that are all through the prism of a war that's yeah. going on in the Middle We've East. We've gone Gaza-Gaga, as far as Gaza, I can Gaza, tell. Gaza, and what for? I don't know.